Google her. <laughs> really interesting. And Tom. Tom works since 2000 as director of MUSE in Belgium, and which is a platform organization for artists in co-creation. You are also an artist in the field of uh, electronic music, right? As a composer and DJ, no? Okay, well, got it right. <laughs> we can Google every one of the people who are sitting here. Then we have uh, Cosima Deras, she's a social designer and um, an artist. <laughs> she's born in Paris and studied first landscape architecture and then social design at Angewandte in Wien. And she works with notions of identity in the collective. And um, next to her we have Tina Leisch. Um, she's a film, theatre and text worker. She creates theatre experiments in social conflict zones and makes movies to set traps to power relations through images. I hope I did translate this right from your page, but I really like the sentence in German. <laughs> um, and ultimately she works uh, with Die Schweigende Mehrheit seit Jahren. Uh, and her new piece, which we are going to look forward to, is uh, Dreiskirchen, the musical. And we already know you, Horst Muldoon. Thanks for joining you all on the panel. Um, actually, I want to uh, start right here, and I think it's very good that you two sit together, because I think a lot of the um, topics that you raised in your keynote also translate in your work, Tina, actually. So, uh, you also worked in uh, women's prisons, you work now with refugees, and as far as I know, you started your work at Dreiskirchen also just pointing a sign theater. <laughs> Uh, but then actually you took uh, yeah, the next piece, Die Schutzbefohlenen, so you really do work issue-based. So maybe you can respond a little bit to what Royston said. Yeah, I, I think uh, that was maybe the main point in your speech. I am not so much agreeing, or I just my work is uh, very different. Maybe even because uh, I'm also in this whole uh, discussion to now missing one point, because I think there are like three points. There's the art, we are artists. There's the social issue and there's also the political issue. And I mainly come from a political activism to art, so not from the social part. I'm not in, so much interested in making social work with art, but fellow prisoners will expect you to be proud and the prison will expect you to, uh, to, to feel uh, sorry. And the theater is just one play where you, where you are able to develop your own position towards what you did and said this was okay, this was not okay, but some parts of my life are okay and I think that's, therefore I, <laughs> Okay, well I want to start by saying I think at one point anybody who is more political than me, I'm an extremely political person, um, in practice probably one of the driving forces in my life and my heart is for me, highly political, and everything that I said earlier for me was about the politics of art. The second thing is a lot of my projects are not fun. Fun is probably the last thing that people experience in most of my projects, if you've seen <laughs> any of my projects. Um, when I worked with Roma children in Romania, I took a hundred Roma children and took them into the theater in Bucharest, and I made a piece, um, Firebird, by Igor Stravinsky. And the purpose of that was to actually, because I know that they live with this discrimination totally, they live with this identity of Roma, I felt that for me, and I'm totally with you on what you do, and if it's good, it's great. I mean, I'm not against it. But what I wanted to do in that situation was to say, you know what, apart from being Roma and how you all in the audience see us every day, we are actually fantastic performers, fantastic artists, creative, powerful people. We are going to do a fantastic production of Stravinsky's Firebird. And the reaction to that was enormous. And if that's not a political act, I don't know what is a political act. And the same in the prison, as I was trying to tell the story. One of the things that the prisoners missed was the opportunity to be doing something as themselves, not as prisoners. So this doesn't mean, and the reason I make that kind of talk at the beginning is to be provocative. I mean, I know that that's going to be a difficult situation when I put those ideas forward. 
but I certainly want to say that I'm not about art as fun. Issues. So, um, and there it's very important to deal with the um, with what is the the, the the issue of the people. So, um, but I agree with you. A refugee piece where the refugees are asked to tell where they're from and to to be uh, victimized again. This would be the wrong issue. But I think, for example. I mean, you know, at one hand side we have uh, like identities which are put on you from outside, you uh, um, and which are like narcissistic kränkung, like narcissistic uh, humiliation, and there are also identities where I'm proud of, but I might be proud, like I work a lot with Roma people, Gypsy people, so they are proud to be Roma, but they are um, discriminated because of being Roma, so it makes that would not make sense to work without having the issue of being Roma in the play, because it's just the idea of giving another representation of what they consider as an identity. And also, for example, in working in a woman prison, I realized that there is, at one hand side, the people are humiliated to, to, to be told you're criminal, you have done something wrong. But at the other hand side, most of these women um, have uh, violated classical female roles, because becoming a criminal as a woman, beat up the husband or kill the husband who humiliated you, is also something to be proud of in a certain way. I mean, at the end it's not good to end in prison, but there are, there have uh, been, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so, so the idea, I, I work much more, I, I mainly work with, um, I mean, it's cool, it's just the thing you say if you work in school, it's about forget that you're in the bad, bad school for the poor guys and uh, work everybody and forget the identities. But if I go to prison or if we work with refugees, it's exactly how can we uh, find in the theatre work another definition of this identification of the society and develop something which is giving our own or the, 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 the definition of the group of what they are and, and to make a space to redefine this, uh, 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 this uh, definition from the others and to put an on, on the definition. So. Um, I think it's, for example, my prison work was choosing Medea and to see, see, you know, we have this Greek heroine and she killed her children and then also prison the worst, the, the most, uh, in the hierarchy of the prisoners, the most um, discriminated are the women who killed children, so all others look down to them. So the idea was taking Medea as the Greek heroine and say, you know, in this play she is the big hero and this turns something up or down which is uh, considered in the prison. So maybe this could be one issue to, 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 to talk about how can we deal with this issues without forgetting them. And also, for example, now Treskirchen, the musical, is exactly about that. So. Dealing with you are identified as a refugee, but I'm not just a refugee. This is just a, or even if the people are here, they are not refugees anymore. They have been till the moment they got the asylum card, and then they are not more a refugee. They're just living here. And how do we deal with this? So you mean uh, assigning a positive role to the already discriminating role, or maybe the yeah the big sign they already have in their heads to put this positively and to make it a political issue. So. I just think that one, certainly one strategy is that forget it all about, we do something where it doesn't matter what society tells about us, we just have fun and make art, but another strategy can be to develop something to reject exactly the definitions that are put on you and uh, and and uh, give it back to the side to, to redefine and to develop other um, point of view and other self definition. But um, especially in prison, it is um, I think it's 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 good to look to for theatre is just they face with the refugees. So they were able to go from there to make their decision. But first, I wanted to just release them so that they could just start free. So we're on the same page, but working from a totally different direction.
Okay, uh, uh, shortly. I just, <laughs> I just um, I think there's another question, uh, I, it just occurred to me, uh, of decisions we have to make. One is this, do we work with the people on their issue or their situation, or just do we just make them forget and go to a place where it doesn't matter where they are now? And, and I think another also in the art is because if you know mention Stravinsky and all this classical, one strategy is to take people who are far away from these bourgeois high culture things of ballet and classical music and bringing them and say this high bourgeois classical music is also for everybody. And there, but it still is staying in this context. Was this, uh, and the other strategy. Um, in your work with people, you also actually develop the ideas through the way you work with them or at the specific spot you work with them. So maybe you could also explain a little bit what your approach to collaborative arts is. Okay. Um, well, I think my... Uh, I work a lot with... Uh, in, my, in my work with Muse, we do a lot with children. Uh, we work a lot in the school uh, environment. And then in my own work, I work more in communities. But in the two parts of my work, I always... Um, it's a bit like you said, it's really like approach them as a human and then see what comes out of there and then do a process with what comes out of there. I don't have a lot of goals, I don't put um, a product, I don't see a product at the end, but I just try things out and experiment a lot and then we, we try to make art. <laughs> but that's a bit different from what you said, I think, because in my, um, in my work it's not really the product, the product is not that... Uh, Sometimes it's important, but the process is more important to me. And also, a big difference for me is that I, 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 want, I fail as an artist sometimes, and I want to fail in my process, I also can fail with the children. And that, that feeling of failure and that it's possible, you can fail, you have success, and sometimes it doesn't work out, and try new, new things out, that process for me is also very important, that we can, sometimes it doesn't work, and then that's, that's also, for me, a very important approach, as. Being an artist, I can show we can fail and something. Failure is an option. Raisa, when would you say that you fail in a project? Sorry? When would you say that you fail in a project? What is the criteria for you to say? Um, that it had some effect also on the people who work with you. Meet them then. So I will take effect. <laughs> Seeds yeah. and effect. Political effect. Okay. Rest. It's really I can think of is development and relevance. <laughs> okay, I think we uh, are already started a little bit late, but we wanted to open the discussion a little bit to the audience. So, if you have specific questions, please uh, put them now. And if not, we will have the possibility to talk about all these subjects in the World Cafes and also during the workshops and the whole weekend. Medea, we developed just on the storyline of Medea. Actually, we watched uh, Pasolini's Medea, and we did, we used the storyline and developed with a um, Bosnian writer, uh, Alma Haji Beganovic. Um, so she came to prison with me, and we developed a play based on the stories of the people. So it was just the storyline of Medea. <coughs> Using Kilpata Medea would have been the sort of Blah, 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 blah. It was just uh, using, I think, I, I mean, in fact, that's, I think, really one of the main questions because sometimes you need this reference to the canon. At the other side, side I'm, I think there's nothing more boring to make Romeo and Julia with the deaf and Romeo and Julia with the old and Romeo and Julia with the refugees. So, I mean, uh, 
and, 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 and I just made one really bad play in my life. I think really a failure. This was trying to make Othello because uh, I realized that this is just this play. Just you have to forget about it. There's no way to actualize it. It is racist. It is deeply racist. Even it's very beautiful language. There's no way of doing a non-racist Othello. We tried it and it, it was a complete failure. You know. And I think uh, it's really very much. And also this is. With Galileo Galilei, no, you, do you use Brecht or not? What is the, uh, and how do you do it? And I think um, it's, it, for me, it's one of the most interesting questions in this. How do we relate to the expectation of the public? What is culture? What is high culture? What is good culture? And how do we deal with artist work? This is, I mean, this Brecht play is just genius, you know? Every line is genius. Why shouldn't I use it? But um, in which way do I work with this? And I think that's very interesting also with the work with the Roma people. They have a lot of tradition, they have a lot of own music. I would not make with them some classical music, but I also would not make with them any, any uh, just Roma gypsy folklore, you know? And you are in this thing, how do you deal with things that are like, ethnical cliches, stereotypes, how do you deal with this reference to main culture or bourgeois culture and how do you work with different elements to develop something new and I think sometimes you just start out of nothing and forget all this that have, have existed before or for example this our refugee play was last was um, using a Frida Jelinek um, Schutzbefohle and it was really doing it, I mean, it's high culture, you know, it was a Nobel Prize winner, but it was just the idea to make a re-lecture of this text she had written about the refugee movement with refugees, and look what happens if refugee read is now, what the, our Nobel Prize winner writer writes about them, and then uh, it is performed in book theater by professional actors, and what happens if the refugees themselves read what she wrote of them, so it's a re-lecture, and I think... Uh, it's not, I don't have a solution, but I think it's uh, important to, to every, for every project to know these elements and where do you position which project and how do you deal with all these things. Uh, I understand your point, but I think it's a weird uh, two poles. You do it or you don't do it, and I think if you, if it's an honest invitation and an honest desire to do Roman and Juliet, even if it's for the 500th time, it's something different than saying, okay, the default position is always to do something by Shakespeare because we we'll invite them into high culture. That's, but if the process is something different, then it's, I mean, I, I, I love Roman and Juliet, and I think it's the most wonderful invitation to ask people, well, would you love to do Romeo and Juliet with me? It's the most wonderful text and it. something could happen that's interesting and um, I think that's, that's enough. But of course, if you just do it because people will come and journalists will come because it's Shakespeare and they're expecting something, can come from something completely different, this gesture. Horizon is already nervous now that he's joining us again at the panel, so I will let you answer to this shortly and then we will think give the others also the possibility to...